What does the New Testament teach about homosexuality? Hi, welcome to today's lesson. This is six in a series that we're just focusing on what scripture, the Bible, in total has to say about homosexuality. And if you missed the first ones, the first uh, five, search for them and find them because we're building on that. But we were finding ourselves today in Romans chapter one, uh, in verse number 18, where Paul wrote, the wrath of God is currently present tense revealed from heaven against um, uh, all, not just homosexuality, but against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And that's what's happening universally. Well, no, 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 it's, it's happening everywhere in the world. The truth is being suppressed in unrighteousness um, by everybody except those who have repented and submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So there are actually many people within Christendom, under the banner of Christendom, who are still suppressing the truth and unrighteousness because they, they really haven't submitted to Jesus Christ. You know, They're just phony Christians. So all of them, plus everybody else, they're all suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. And concerning homosexuality, that's you know very clear. Uh, concerning other forms of sexual immorality, that's very clear. I mean, where, whereas everyone would pretty much believe that adultery is wrong because you know, you're breaking your vow. People think we should tell the truth still. Most people think, think that's still right, <laughs> but they don't do it, but, but they think it's right to tell the truth. Uh, they think adultery is wrong, but, but most people these days aren't thinking that fornication is wrong. That is sex between two unmarried people, that it's okay to sleep around with people that you're not married to, people whom you're not committed to. So, so, so they're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness because when you have sex with someone who you're not married to and you're not married, you're probably very likely having sex with someone who's gonna be someone's wife and, and, or be someone's husband. Likewise, you are gonna be someone's spouse. So you're sinning against your future spouse and the future spouse or the person you're having sex with. And so if you think adultery is wrong, but you don't think fornication is wrong, you're a confused person. <laughs> you're only fooling yourself, you're not fooling God. Right? And, and again, I, I, please, I hope I'm not coming across as like the big know-it-all proud guy because I was in that category. I suppressed the truth for a good part of my life, but then I finally gave in to the truth. I quit suppressing it and it flooded my mind I, and my eyes were opened. I saw the light, you know, as they say, and oh my goodness, I can't believe how blind I was for so long. I was blind because I wanted to be blind. I wanted to suppress the truth. I didn't want to know the truth because I knew that I'd have to change and I have to make... Jesus, my boss. Okay, now listen to Paul's elaboration on this suppression of the truth, because this applies in homosexuality, you know, applies with uh, fornication. All the things that people say today are, are not wrong. You know, at one time they did say we're wrong, but they don't say they're wrong today. That's only because they're suppressing the truth because they, they, they still agree on some level. They all agree that homosex, they all agree, excuse me, that adultery is wrong. They all agree that sex with children is wrong. They all agree that sex with animals is wrong. <laughs> you know, so they have this moral standard. Some homosexuals say that it's wrong to sleep around with multiple partners. We should be committed in a one-to-one -one relationship till death do us part. So there's a standard that they've established there, you see. Okay, um, so we, you ought to be asking yourself that question. I've said this so many times. What makes it wrong? What makes it wrong? If you think it's wrong, if you, if you trace down the origins, the roots of what makes you think it's wrong, you have to make a conclusion. It's God who, who, who put that within my conscience. There is a God, and I ought to be listening to him, not just partially, but fully listening to him. So, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteous men who suppress the truth of unrighteous. Continuing, verse 19, because that which is known about God, now listen to this, is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. And so, um, God has revealed things about himself, and it's evident within every single person. They're conscience, their inward thoughts, the, what comes in through their five senses, you know, the magic show that God's putting on every day all around us in our physical bodies, of course, in, 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 in natural life, when we look at all of the amazing things in creation that nobody can explain, you know, 
It's evident. God is crying out to us. I am here. I am holy. I have standards. I made you. I have a right to tell you what to do. You are a rebel. God's saying these things to everybody around the world nonstop every day of their lives. But they're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. They are ignoring what God has made evident to them. Verse 20, more of an elaboration. For since the creation, that's the key word, since the creation of the world, his, that's God's, invisible attributes, his invi in other words, you can't see them, but you know something about what God is like. What can you figure out about God by just looking at the creation and listening to your conscience? You can figure out that God is great, and that's the understatement of the millennium. You know, God is so great. He created the universe, stars and, universe, uh, stars and galaxies that are millions and billions of light years away, you know, oh my goodness. Explain that, figure that out, or go down to the molecular level, go down to the DNA and explain that, how the code in every cell of your body from that code could reassemble every single part of your body. Explain how your eye works, how your brain works. Explain to me anything. You can't. That's God trying to get your attention. And you also know God is great. You know he's good because you experience his goodness all the time. Every time you breathe the fresh air and feel the pine scent from the forest, every time you see a beautiful sunset, every time you hear a bird you know, sing a song, every time you look at the face of a baby that that baby smiles at you, every time that you have sex with your spouse, every time that you bite into a crisp October apple. I mean, God is saying, I'm good, and I love to bless you. <laughs> but God's also saying to everybody all the time, I'm holy. Because all the time, we, we, you know, within our conscience, we have a little monitor saying, that's right, that's wrong. In fact, you know, you see things all the time that you make moral judgments about. All the time. In human beings, you say, oh, what they did is wrong. Every movie and TV show you watch, the overriding theme is there's people that are the good guys and people that are the bad guys. And you agree, yeah, those guys are bad. But it's interesting, those bad guys commit adultery. <laughs> oh, that's a little confusing. I guess they're not so, excuse me, those good guys commit adultery. I'm, if you, pardon me, I said that wrong. Those good guys, you know, the, the good guys who tell the truth and who overcome the bad guy, they commit adultery. That's a little bit confusing, isn't it? You see, they're blurring. And, and, and yet still, everyone who watches knows that's, that's, all, that's also wrong. Those actors and actresses that are exposing their bodies for everybody to see, everyone knows that's wrong. Everybody knows that's wrong. <laughs> In their conscience, but they suppress it. All right, so and when we make moral judgments of other people, we make moral judgments of animals. We see we see animals be selfish, and we think to ourselves, that's selfish of that animal. <laughs> see, you know right and wrong. You know selfishness is wrong because you just judged an animal that was selfish. How much more is it wrong for you to be selfish then, now that you've judged animals? All right, out of time for today. Pick up here in the next little lesson. Thanks for joining me.